God bless you. Welcome again to another episode of Change Experiences with Pastor Derek. I am super excited about the season in which we're living in, and I believe that God has some great things in store for your life. Changing Experiences is about real people sharing real stories and allowing unprecedented access into their lives as living epistles for the glory of God. Changing Experiences is an unscripted opportunity to allow God to speak through the real lives of my guests. Today, we're going to be uh, talking about something that's very dear to my heart. African-American history. I want you to tune in. Get the kids ready. It's going to be a great show. I am really excited about today's show, today's topic that we have as we're celebrating and we're just uh, remembering Black History Month. Uh, it's a phenomenal time of the year. Uh, I really believe that it should take place 365 days of the year, uh, but we do have February that we begin to highlight just the achievements of African Americans uh, within our country, within our nation, the, the great achievements that they've done. And I am really excited today to have this guest that I have. Uh, she's making a lot of changes and doing a lot of great things in our community. Uh, I want you to welcome with me today my guest, Senator Geraldine Thompson. God bless you. How are you doing today? I am doing well. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I'm so glad to have you. You're doing so much in the community, and you're, you're making so many things happen, and we're just excited about uh, you and, and what you're doing. Uh, when we talk about Black History Month, uh, you are an educator, you are an activist, you just have done a lot of great things. You're a mother, uh, you're a wife. Uh, when you think about the, the history of African American history, what kind of comes to your mind? Well, it is important because it shows us how God has brought us through many uh, challenges, um, many times when we should have been counted out, uh, we continued. And so it's important to highlight the history. There is a passage in Joshua uh, where people are moving from one area to a different territory, and they're commanded as they cross the river to take stones with them mm -hmm. and on the other side of the river to use the stones to build a monument. And then later generations will ask, what's, what's the meaning of the stones? And you can explain this is how God has brought us. And that's what African American history is and why it's important that we can continue to highlight it. Wow, that's, that's, that, that's a wonderful, wonderful story as well, analogies that you brought into this. And when I'm thinking about what you're doing and your accomplishments, and now uh, your 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 office, your even your office is in a very historical place. It Can is. you just talk to us a little bit about the Wells uh, Wells Museum? Uh, my Senate office is located in the Wells Built, which was originally a hotel built by Dr. William Monroe Wells, who was one of only two African Americans uh, in the early 1900s who uh, practiced here in Orlando, and he graduated from. Mahal Harry Medical uh, School and learned about the uh, town and the city of Orlando through reading the newspaper and decided that he would move to Orlando. Well, when he came, there was no hotel. There was very little social life, very little cultural uh, life for African Americans. And so he decided that he would create those opportunities. He operated what was called the South Street Casino. And it was a performance hall, not a gambling uh, establishment. And uh, there was a segregated military base here at South and Bumby. And it was called South Camp. And all of the military people would come to uh, the South Street Casino on the weekends. And Dr. Wells brought in the big bands, Lionel Hampton, uh, Count Basie, Cab Calloway, Billie Holiday, you name it, and wow. they came to perform. When they finished performing, they had no place to stay unless a family took them in. And we know that um, many entertainers slept in their cars, uh, athletes as well, but he built a hotel at 511 West South Street, a two-story uh, red brick building, 6,800 square feet, and all of the guest bedrooms were upstairs, and not only entertainers, but dignitaries like Thurgood Marshall 
stayed at the Wells Belt. There uh, is a new book actually published in 2013 called Devil in the Grove. It won the Pulitzer Prize, and it focuses on the Groveland Four and the trial in the town of Groveland, where Thurgood Marshall was uh, one of the defense attorneys, along with Paul Perkins, Sr., and they had to find some place to stay. No hotel would rent Thurgood Marshall a room in Lake County. Families who might have taken him in had been threatened by the Klan. So he used a directory compiled in New York called the Negro Motorist Green Book. It was done by a man named Victor Green. And in the Green Book, he found this hotel 40 miles away in Paramore, and it was the Wells Belt, and that's where Thurgood Marshall stayed. And I know that Lionsgate has purchased the rights to Devil in the Grove, and they're looking to make a movie. And this is a resource right in our community that people don't know a whole lot about. And that is where my, my Senate office is located, in uh, what we call the Ray Charles Room. And my office is at the very end of the hall. You come in, and where he would walk straight forward, and when he ran into the wall, he knew that his room was right to the <laughs> left. Yes. Wow. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see just how much history is in Orlando. And just, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's just awesome that you chose that location to also take your place. What drove you back there? Well, I learned about it, uh, actually, from uh, Representative Alzo Reddick, who grew up here in Orlando and was a paper boy, and he would collect his papers outside of the Wells Build and then distribute the papers uh, throughout the community. And he knew that I had a love for African-American history. And when I worked at Valencia as an administrator, every year in February, I would uh, put up exhibits, I would have information on African American history. But the problem was, while you could find information on Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, um, Rosa Parks, Dr. King, you couldn't find information on the local people who were so instrumental in this community. And so I participated in an oral history project. And we interviewed people like Dr. I. Sylvester Hankins, Jr., interviewed uh, Knapp Ford, um, interviewed Rufus Brooks. And then I sat down, years later, we recorded all of those interviews, and I sat down and transcribed the recordings. And um, I published uh, a book. And so I had so much material at Valencia that we didn't really have a place to keep it. And um, Alzo Reddick's told me about the Wells Building and said, you know, we ought to work on revitalizing this building, which was constructed in the 1920s, and that would be an ideal location for the museum. And uh, that's where we are. It's now listed on the National Register of Historic Places because of the historically significant people who live there. Wow. And when I think about all the rich history that Orlando has to offer, and I think about all the things that We've seen how uh, us as a race, we've really overcome a lot of things. How does it make you feel when you look at our low voters' turnout rates? Uh, when you think about how many people just kind of brush it off and just say, hey, you know, that's on somebody else to worry about. And I know that you've also started an initiative as well, uh, helping out with that voters kind of registration and the rallies and uh, just the initiative that you've done. Talk just a little bit about that for us. Well, it's, it's very uh, frustrating uh, that we don't take advantage of our right as Americans to be a part of the democratic process. And that's what the vote gives us. And we complain about things in our communities and in uh, society, but we don't participate at the level uh, that we should. And then when you think about the sacrifices that so many people made, uh, many times in terms of their losing their lives so that we could vote and then we don't exercise that right to vote. I talk to people all the time about Dr. King's visit to Orlando in 1964. Uh, he was going to all white establishments. He went to Tinkerfield. He did a lot of work in St. Augustine and he was arrested in St. Augustine on June 11th, 1964. He wrote a letter from the St. Augustine jail 
to a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Israel Dresner in New Jersey, and told him about the fact that he was arrested in St. Augustine, and he asked him to send as many rabbis as possible to St. Augustine. They all came, and it resulted in the largest mass arrest of rabbis uh, wow. in the nation. And, and people certainly know about the letter from the Birmingham jail that Dr. King wrote, but they don't know about the letter from the St. Augustine jail that he wrote. And we should, uh, we should, this information needs to be part of our lesson plans, part of our curriculum. And we need to know our history so that we understand who we are and that we are a resilient, uh, very strong, uh, tenacious people who have not given up. And when, when there were people who didn't want us to vote, we were working to make sure we had the right to vote. And one of the people who started the uh, Progressive Voters League in Florida was Harry T. Moore in MIMS, also right here in Central Florida. He registered more African-Americans to vote in Florida than any other state in the nation. And uh, he also wanted equalization of pay for white teachers and black teachers. Black teachers made a third of what white teachers made, and Harry T. Moore championed their cause. When this trial that I talked about earlier uh, happened in Groveland for four men accused of rape, uh, two of them were shot by the sheriff in Groveland. He, the, the U.S. Supreme Court had ordered a new trial for them. He went to Rayford to drive them back to Groveland, stopped the car, had them get out, shot one who died on the spot. The other one pretended to be dead and lay absolutely still. And he was able to tell the story in the hospital that the sheriff, without provocation, and had shot them. They were handcuffed and shackled, and the sheriff said that they were trying to attack him. But Harry T. Moore called for the impeachment of Willis McCall, who was the sheriff. And on Christmas night in 1951, a bomb was placed under the bedroom of his home. He and his wife, um, he died that night. She lived nine days later. The FBI came to her hospital room and said that there had been a, uh, a drawing, the floor plan of their home had been circulated at a Klan meeting. And the bomb was placed directly under the bedroom. Now, these are the first two martyrs in the civil rights movement. I'm talking about 1951, before Rosa Parks on the bus in 1955, before the Montgomery bus boycott that Dr. King led. And this is all Florida history, wow. which is American history that we don't know. And see, that's the stuff that we need to have. We got to continue to go forward, and we have to continue to educate our kids. Uh, I, I'm, we're going to continue this discussion. I want to go a little bit further with you as well. Uh, we're going to take a quick station break right now, and we're going to come right back, and we're going to continue to discuss just a little bit more about this with Senator Geraldine Thompson. T stay tuned. Uh, John Polk is coming up. He's getting ready to minister to us. It's going to be a great time. Uh, stay tuned with us, and we're coming back to have a little bit further discussion about this so important method. Uh, method. God bless you all. We'll be right back. Standing in your presence, I'm honored being here with you. Being here with you. Standing in your presence, I'm honored. Father, I come. I'm honored. Seeking your face, not just your hand. Standing in your presence, I'm honored. Being here with you, standing in your presence, I'm honored. Being here with you, standing in your presence, I'm honored. Being here with you, standing in your presence. Cast me not away. Cast me not away from your presence. Please don't take 
your spirit away from me. Whatever you do. I draw nigh. I draw close to you. Here with you. Need to be. We're here today enjoying this discussion with our senator, Senator Geraldine Thompson, as she's enlightening us and giving us some rich history about our Central Florida community. As we're highlighting the month of uh, February for our Black History Month, uh, it's something that's very important. If you have any kids around in the house, I think you ought to pull them close to the TV screen now and allow them to be seated so that they can learn something that talks about who they are. Uh, Senator, as we were in our last segment talking, it was just, uh, you were just literally pouring out so much information. I felt like just putting my hands on my knees and just listening into uh, the richness of history that we have in our city. I mean, when we think about a lot of the national names that we talk about, it's amazing how they have uh, literally trails that lead right back here to Central Florida area. When we talked about the Thurgood Marshalls, we talked about the Martin Luther Kings, um, the Rosa Parks. So many uh, have been here uh, and, and have literally made such powerful impacts and left blueprints right here in the Central Florida area. Uh, when you think about our culture now and you hear uh, the stories that we're being told and you see some of the neighborhoods and how they're turning for the worse, um, uh, and 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 we think about the history from where we come from. Uh, how does it make someone uh, who knows the history feel when you see the demographics in the community of how we're acting now? Well, I think we can attribute a lot of this to the fact that we really don't know who we are. Uh, when our ancestors were brought here uh, from Africa, the history, the culture, the religion, a lot of that was lost. And we are people who tend to share things through the oral tradition. We pass our information on by storytelling. And we haven't, we haven't written a lot of the history. We haven't documented a lot of the history. And I've heard it said that if it's not documented, 
it didn't happen. It doesn't exist. So we have got to be uh, diligent about documenting and recording our history, starting with our grandparents, talking to them, making sure that that information uh, is passed on. And some of the richest places in our community are the graveyards, because people take all of that rich history with them uh, when they leave and transition. And so we've got to make sure that we, we capture that. With regard to uh, the way we teach African American history, certainly we set aside February, but it ought to be incorporated into American history, into Florida history, into social studies. Uh, we are working with publishers of our textbooks. And now every child who studies civics in eighth grade now in the state of Florida has a textbook that has information about the Wells built in it. That's they awesome. open their, their book and, and there it is. And so that's the way that you infuse it and you get it incorporated rather than having it seen as something that is just set aside and significant in February because the history that I've talked about in just this brief uh, amount of time is as relevant in September and November as it is in February. And we do a lot, um, to focus on events. Now, we may celebrate the King holiday, but know very little about Dr. King. And an event is not instruction. Mm, and we need, to be, we need to be focused on instruction. And I think that's one of the crippling effects of our community, is that we are quick to be entertained, yes, but not fast to be enriched. Yes. And so we want to be entertained. We want you to uh, satisfy us for the pleasures of time but not to get us to the place of understanding of who we really are. And if we don't know that we're kings, if we don't know that we're inventors and creators, I mean, most of the inventions that have taken place have been done at the hands of African Americans. And this is something that I've been doing um, in the Florida Senate, is educating the legislature regarding this history, because it's an economic engine that we have not tapped into. When you go to Memphis, Tennessee, and you go to the Lorraine Motel, there's now a National Civil Rights Museum where people come from all over the world. You go to Atlanta, and the King Center is there, and there's now a new Civil Rights Human Rights Museum that's there. You go to Alabama, to the 16th Street uh, Church, and, and Florida has not highlighted its history and captured the tourists who come here who are interested in culture. Uh, people are interested in uh, religion, they're interested in folkways, they're interested in music. They want to know how people live. And this is an opportunity for us to reach back. I call it Sankofa. This is the bird who flies forward as, as he looks back. And we need to go back and fetch our history and highlight it and make sure that our children understand that some people make the news and other people make history. Ah, that's good. People who make the news are temporary. People who make history are the ones that are going to be recognized far into the future. And it is the people like Dr. William Monroe Wells, uh, Dr. I. Sylvester Hankins, Jr., L. Claudia Allen, uh, Paul Perkins, James R. Smith, the landmarks that we have now those are the people who've had a lasting effect and who have made history. And some of them probably made the news as well. But our young people are so concerned about the temporary that they don't look at the long term. And that's, that's, that is powerful. The news and the history. Uh, I remember uh, a while ago, I heard a preacher say that history is his story. Yes. His story. And when we think about history and we look at the youth of today, we look at the times of now, the question becomes, what would they know us for when we are past? What, what, what would they know us for? Would they know us for the generation that destroyed the name and the credibility of the African Americans? Would they know us for being, uh, uh, you know, incarcerated? What would they know us for? And we don't have enough people raising up, willing to go, watch, because in order for you to be part of history, you have to persevere. You have to oh, go absolutely. through some things. Absolutely. And now we're in a temporary convenience method. If it's, we won't stand in line to vote if it's a long line. 
will say, I'm not voting today. Why? The line was long. Why do you do these things? We, we have to position ourselves and we have to fall in love with the greater cause. And I think that's where the newer generation is, is failing. We, don't, we have not fallen in love with a greater cause. And we want to be, we want to be known, but we want to be famous. We want to be famous more than we want to be known. We want to make the news. We want to make the news. And that's a dangerous place for us to be. How can we begin, uh, in, in your best synopsis, how can we begin to shift the boat? Uh, and I understand this is not a rowboat, so we can't just turn overnight. How do we begin to take this cruise liner and turn it around to make it go back into the right directions? Well, the parent is the child's first teacher. Uh, they watch us, that's how they learn to walk and talk and eat and a whole lot of other things. So I think each uh, household has to begin this process of educating children with regard to their history and who they are. And to show them that you come from a long line of very, very strong people. What I'm doing in the Florida Senate is I do a first person portrayal of a historic African American female. Uh, the first one that I did was Harriet Tubman, who spent, during the Civil War, uh, her time here in Florida as a nurse and a spy in Fernandina. And she used plants and shrubbery to cure illnesses that uh, doctors couldn't figure out uh, how to bring people back from. And she was so successful. And when freedom came at the end of the Civil War, she was here in Florida. And most people don't know, don't know that. that. That's, see, that's the kind of stuff that we have to begin to educate our kids on. We have to show them about what's happening. We have to show them that we are great people. Uh, I think that we have to lift the morales, um, show them that we can persevere through, that we can make it through trials and through tribulations and different situations. I want to make sure that everybody knows where the Wells Built is again. Uh, give the address to it again. We are located at 511 West South Street. Now we're neighbors to the Amway Center. We're at South and Division, but the Wells Built was there first. Uh, it has been there over 80 years. The bottom floor is the museum that uh, highlights the history that I am sharing. And on the second floor, where all of the dignitaries, the Thurgood Marshalls, the Jackie Robinsons, the Count Basies, where they lived, uh, those are now uh, offices, and that is where my Senate office is located. And I could have put my legislative office anywhere. When I was elected to the House of Representatives in 2006, I located in Paramore. And I don't care if it's the governor, other senators, whoever needs to see me has to see Paramore. Gotcha. and has to see the people in Paramore awesome. and understand the challenges of the people in that community because these are the people that I serve and I want them uh, to know what the challenges are. And so that is where we are. I so appreciate you. I so appreciate you bringing such a wealth of knowledge to us today. And you have been um, not only educated to us, you've been a blessing to us today as we are able to share this all across Central Florida, uh, all across the airways, as people see just the great history and heritage that we have within our community. Thank you so much again, Senator. And if you're watching us now, make sure you get your kids in touch with us. Uh, find out more information. Reach out to Senator Thompson's office as well. Uh, she is just pouring out with information and a wealth of knowledge. And your kids will be a better person because of the fact that they understand from where they've come from. And so I want to challenge you. Don't just entertain them with the gadgets of today's society. Don't just entertain them with all the television stations. Put them someplace that's going to bless them in the future. And so thank you again for tuning in today with us with Changing Experience with Pastor Derek. Make sure you go out and tell somebody else to watch us. Ch changes are happening. Things are going great. And we look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless you.